Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata. I know it's been a little while since you've heard from me. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. I'm Amata as I just said. I am the co-runner of this channel, work alongside Paul of course. And I've not been anywhere for any regular viewers. I've just been in the background doing a ton of editing because this is our busy period and we've just got a lot of big projects on the go right now. Anyway. We're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about tech news, tech and gaming news today for you guys. The latest tech news from the last 24 or so hours as of the 2nd of November. And we're going to begin today's video with Intel. So, we have some very interesting information for you today, thanks to the Redditor STBLR. Now if that name seems familiar, it's because they also discovered and shared with us of course the full specs of the AMD Navi 21 GPU which was discovered in a Mac OS driver and they have graced the internet with their presence once more to share more details on Intel's next generation graphics and consumer processor series. So this is mostly graphics but we do have a little processor news as I just said but let's start with the graphics for starting off with Intel's DG3. Now of course as we already know because Intel have shared it with us they already are developing their XE HPG architecture which is going to be targeted at gamers and the first GPU to utilize this architecture is rumored to be DG2. However the new leak is focused on its successor which of course is DG3 which would be a Gen 13 GPU at least allegedly according to these drivers. It's sadly too early to judge where we'll see this graphics processor being used. Again, information pretty thin on the ground and just way too early to say. But that's not where the information stops, my friends. No, no, no. We also have something about Intel's Jupiter Sound. And according further to this information, it is allegedly a Gen 13 GPU which will succeed the Arctic Sound series. Of course, once again, Intel have already shown us what's going on with XE HP based GPUs, and we do know that they are up to a four tile configuration with up to 2048 execution units. But here comes to that sprinkle of flavor, just that dash of processor news to, uh, to mix in here. And it is Intel's Lunar Lake. And it is a code name, of course, for their next generation processors. Now, before I get into any further information, I do just want to say that credit to Moore's Law is dead. He is the first person to originally leak that code name, Lunar Lake. So, of course, credit to him. But what they shared, that being the leak, uh, this, this, this leak today, just to be clear, is that Intel's Lunar Lake processors will also use Gen 13 graphics and will allegedly be based upon DG3 and is rumoured, again stressing rumoured, to be a successor to Meteor Lake but again we just don't know for sure but one thing is safe that we shouldn't expect any of the stuff I just talked about anytime soon. Anyway we're going to move on now to Nvidia. So if you've been watching this channel for a while or have just been generally keeping your ear to the ground when it comes to all things tech and all things NVIDIA, you'll know that there's been a lot of chatter recently about the unannounced RTX 30 cards. Of course, one of them is the RTX 3060 Ti or Ti, whichever one you prefer. And of course, we ourselves have been reporting on it fairly recently. Now, you may recall if you've seen our previous videos that... Our source had originally, originally excuse me, told us a release date of the 17th excuse me, of November, but it seems that has changed. Now this report has come to us thanks to XP Review, and according to their findings, the RTX 3060 Ti will now be launching in early December, on the 2nd of December to be exact. Now we'll just say that we have spoken to our source and they have confirmed that this is indeed correct. Of course, massive pinch of salts required for all of this, but just saying from our source they have confirmed that yes, it was originally planned for the 17th of November, but has now been pushed back to the 2nd of December. Now sadly, we don't know why it's been pushed back. Now obviously why it's been pushed back it's not particularly important from a consumer standpoint, considering that these cards haven't even been officially announced yet. But, you know, you have to wonder why. But sadly, we just don't know. Now, I will say, to be fair to NVIDIA, this is technically not a delay, because again, these cards haven't been revealed yet. But it is a delay in the sense that this is later than the originally leaked date, or 17th, excuse me, of November. 
Now obviously we finally know what's going on, at least with the top end stack of what AMD are up to, but of course they have not unveiled, for example, the RX 6700 cards, which you would assume would be the main competitor for the 3060 Ti, but uh, AMD have kept shim on that for now. Same as Nvidia, you know, th this is always the way it goes, they announce the top end cards, and then later on, a few months later or whatever, we get the mid range and then the sort of lower end trickle as you were. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how both AMD and NVIDIA face off in the mid-range. Because obviously, we all love to talk about the best of the best. The top-end cards of, of both NVIDIA and AMD, just to see you know, what, they, what they can provide at the price points, performance, gaming benchmarks, ray tracing, all that stuff, just... Mm. Mm, give it all to me. But obviously when it comes to your average consumer, a lot of people are just going to go with the mid-range because it's more affordable and you're still going to get decent performance for the money, at least in theory. Of course, we don't know anything other than rumors, leaks, etc. about what's going on uh, for the mid-range here. So it's going to be really interesting to see who comes out on top in the mid-range, I think. Obviously not as interesting a discussion in terms of raw benchmarks and just crushing performance and all that as the top-end cars from both companies, but still... A valuable battleground for both companies, I think we can all agree. Anyway, we're going to move on from NVIDIA to AMD now, as we have some benchmarks for the 5600X. This time around, we have Tom Apisak to thank for this. He has very graciously shared some Cinebench R15 results over on Twitter. You can, of course, find a link to his, twi link to his tweet excuse me, in the description below. And as showing off the multi-thread performance of the 5600X, which again is a six-core part. So this was running at overclocked speeds of 4.7 gigahertz across all six cores. And we do see a score here of 2040 CB again for the multi-core uh, results and 258 in the single thread. As for the rest of the test rig, we can see that it was running at DDR4 memory at 3200 MHz, CL14 timings, with an ASUS ROG Crosshair 9 Hero motherboard and voltage was set to 1.265.6. Now if we head on over to WCCF Tech, and of course you can find a link to their article below, they have very helpfully put together a nice chart to show some numbers. I will say they used Anantex comparison numbers here to get a full stack of results to give us a more complete picture of how the 5600X actually performs compared to other uh, parts on Cinebench, at least. So as you can see, it does come below the 3700X by a few points. It's hard to tell on this chart, to be honest, exactly how many. It's not a huge... Uh, difference, I'm sure you could agree, but it does come above the 10700K, again by just a hair, but is significantly in front of the 3600XT and the 10600K from Intel. So based upon these numbers, the 5600X is 42% faster in multi-threading and 25% faster in single core performance than the 10600K, which has a faster clock speed and a higher TDP, just for some clarity there. So, pretty interesting. I will say I was pretty impressed by the showing that um, Zen 3 put in when AMD revealed it a few weeks ago. I was, again, pretty impressed by what they showed off. So, it's going to be interesting to see how well it does when we can finally get our hands on it, do some tests, etc. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get our hands on a sample. Anyway, we're going to round off today's video with some PS5 news, first of which is... Some news from the dual sense. So obviously we already know, have so, have done for some time now that the dual sense controller for the PS5 will not work with the PS4. But something interesting has been discovered. Obviously, American uh, consumers do get the PS5 a bit earlier than those of us in the UK and the EU. But the PS5 accessories, including the controller, are available to purchase and some Americans have actually managed to purchase one and do some testing. So this is all thanks to the YouTube app Midnight Man. You can of course find his video linked below. So the DualSense is not recognized by the PS4 console. Okay? And what you might say. <laughs> the funny part is this. The PS5 does connect to the PS3, probably because the PS3 can connect with generic Bluetooth controllers and according to a Twitter user by the name of Broken Games HDR, 
It does work on the Nintendo Switch, but you do need an adapter. Now, of course, it also works on PC. Now, that in itself is not that really much of a surprise, because, well, you can get the DualShock 4 working on PC uh, with some drivers, so you can get that going. But I just find it amusing that it doesn't work on the PS4, but does work on the PS3 and the Nintendo Switch, and of course the PC. Not really a big thing, just made me smile and thought you guys might enjoy this as well. Anyway, I'm going to finish things up now with a little bit of Demon Souls news. And no, no, before you get excited, this is not clarification on the ray tracing situation. As far as I'm aware, there hasn't been one yet. This is a little something about the soundtrack. I just thought you guys might enjoy this because I'm really excited for Demon's Souls. I'm going to be very sad when I can't play it at launch because, well, I'm not going to get a PS5 for launch because I didn't get in the pre-order fast enough. But Sony has given us a few details on how the music, music excuse me, for the remake is actually going to work. They have actually said that the soundtrack will release digitally on the November the 26th and CD and vinyl sales are expected in December. The fact that there's vinyl makes me very happy. Now, they have given a little sample of the music of Demon's Souls. You can, of course, find the video linked below. Go give it a listen. Now, just to give credit, the music, the original score, was created by composer Shinsuke Kida and has been rearranged by Bill Hempstapat. Now, Sony did say in a press statement, thanks to Gaming Audio News for sharing this, and of course we'll include a link below, they said, quote, Go behind the scenes with the music of Demon's Souls, a haunting, epic listening experience of reimagined and re-recorded, awe-inspiring music performed by a 75-piece orchestra, 40-person choir, and multiple vocal and instrumental soloists. Music is used sparingly, and fear builds within you from its absence, and a sense of loneliness and desperation creeps in. That's a quote from the creative director at SIE, Worldwide Studios, Gavin Moore, and he says, quote, But the void left by the music is filled with sound which surrounds you and envelops you. So, something cool, something interesting, and of course Shinsuke Kida is the guy who did the original music for the Demon's Soul soundtrack, but it has been rearranged by uh, Bill Hempstapat, as I said. So once again, you can find a link below to give a little teaser of the music that we could expect for Demon's Souls Remake. I'm really hyped, as I said already. Just wanted to end the video on a, on a good note, on a hyped note, since it's been a little while since I've got to record for you guys. Anyway, that is me done. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. And, oh, thank you guys so much for all your support lately. It's honestly mind-blowing. Thanks again. Bye-bye.